Yeah, it's Rob here with the Final Boss Gamers, and today we're going to be uh, doing a basic four-way movement tutorial, and we'll go ahead and check out what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, we've got a little plane here in the middle of the screen. You push left, it goes left. Uh, you push right, it goes right. Up, it goes up. Down, it goes down. There you go. Okay, pretty simple stuff. And we're actually going to be building this completely from scratch. So let's go ahead and exit out of this game. Okay, and start a fresh one. And we'll scroll down here to the bottom because, like I said, we're going to be making this completely from scratch. I call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this uh, plain game. Alrighty. And we'll go ahead and create a new scene, call this one Sky. And we'll go ahead and change this up, add a little uh, vertical gradient from blue to white. Oh, not purple. <laughs> okay. Got a nice little sky going on. And as you'll notice, I save quite a bit here. You never want to be in a situation where you accidentally lose some of your work. Okay. Then we'll create a new actor. Call him Plane. And then we'll just grab a couple of these uh, pictures here off the desktop that I already had pre prepared. Alright. And save all that. And we'll go in here, create a new actor behavior. Want to put it under motion, obviously. And call this something like four way motion or, or movement, however you want to do it. And then we'll grab some of these flow statements here. We'll do an if and an otherwise if. Because for the uh, left and the right movement, you don't want uh, doing two different things at the same time. Like when they press left and they press right at the same time, you don't want them doing that. So we'll grab some of these uh, user input keyboard controls here. And these uh, movements are already preloaded, left, right, up, and down. All right, so you grab left and right. And then we'll go over here to motion, grab a couple of these uh, set X speed. And for the left, you're going to want that going negative 5. And for the right, you want that going positive 5. And we'll go ahead and attach that to the actor, and you guys can see what that's going to do. Okay, we'll go ahead and test the scene out here. Oh, got to make sure to put the actor in there for sure. Test that out. And push left, it goes left. Push right, it goes right. And as you'll notice, the plane doesn't change, but we'll add that later. And now what you can do is go ahead and just copy and paste. You could you could duplicate, but I'm used to copying and pasting, so I'll stick with that. And you're just going to change these controls here. It's going to be up and down, as opposed to left and right. And then, of course, we'll change the X speed to Y speed and leave the values the same. And now you can test the game out, and you'll see that up and down, or left and right, up and down. But as you'll notice, as we're moving, if you push up, then it's going to constantly be going up, whether or not you're still holding down the up key. And while that's fine for some games, what we're going to do here is we're going to restrict that a little bit. And we're going to add this uh, and statement. Save us, some, save us some time here. But we'll need a uh, not modifier because what we're going to look for here is when the keys are not being pressed, we want the uh, plane to be resting. And grab another not statement here. All right. Go back in here to user input. And we're going to start here with the left and the right. Okay, and then we'll grab another of the uh, action, actor motion ones. Okay, and we'll just have it set the X speed to zero when left key and right key is not being pressed, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So whenever you stop pushing left and right, the uh, plane will be at rest. So left, stop, right, stop. Perfect. And then once again, 
uh, what we're actually going to do is have to pull this off because if I were to right click and uh, duplicate then it would actually duplicate the entire block and not just the one piece that I want and then we'll just change these controls once again to up and down and you'll notice that a lot of times when you're programming that you can save a lot of steps by just writing similar code that you can reproduce okay once again we'll test it out show you that up stop down stop left stop right stop perfect and you can start cruising around with the plane and then once you stop pushing keys the plane stops and that's fine for this project because this is all and then what we're doing here is we're creating attributes for the animations that way whenever it changes uh, direction it'll also change what the plane looks like so it'll make it a little bit more realistic and as we're creating these attributes uh, you always want to try and use something meaningful as far as the name goes and we're just selecting animation here that way whenever we go into the uh, actor and into the behavior that we, we can configure what each one of these animations changes to and that's one of the beautiful things about stencil because that it just makes stuff like this so much easier and makes it look so much more logical alright and we're just going to grab these uh, these switch animations too and you'll find that just under actor and draw as you can see and then just put one for each one of these alright and then should be yeah over here in the attributes and just make sure you match these up correctly otherwise you'll end up with some uh, interesting results and, oh wait too far down go up here there we go and left animation and right animation okay and save all these things and definitely save a lot because if you've experimented with programs before that crash out then you know what a pain it is to have to redo code also in stencil something you need to do is uh, close out of an actor sometimes for it to be able to refresh that behavior I mean, Stencil doesn't crash out a lot, but a lot of other programs I've worked with have, so I'm just in this OCD mode of saving just about after every line of code. And then just make sure for all these animations, just choose the uh, correct one. And see, we gave a memorable name, so we know exactly which ones need to go where. All right, and now left, left, right, right, up and down, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. So okay, and I'm probably going to be expanding on this uh, little tutorial and make a full-fledged game, so make sure to check back, subscribe to the channel, comment, and like the video.